<clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome to a video on Kerbal Space Program. Today we're going to be reenacting one of the famous missions by the Soviet Union, which is the launch of the first ever satellite, Sputnik. Luckily I've already built this for you, so you don't have to watch me do that, because that would be kind of painful to watch if I'm honest. Anyways, now, <laughs> now we're just going to um, find it, because so many rockets saved and I can't find it. It's pretty dumb of me, it's probably so sort of set this up before the video. But whatever. Dealing with it. So this is pretty much what the rocket was like. Just one well this is just a two stage rocket, three stages if you include the launch of the Sputnik into space. Anyways, let's get started. And uh I just put I did I did something that was a bit off, um, well usually was I just put some more solar panels and science instruments, because it didn't come with that in general, and, um, yeah, the original thing only lasted for about a week into orbit, and its battery died, because it just turned off battery, but I put, like, a small solar panel in it, that's hard to notice, so you won't tell the difference, and I put science instruments in it, that way it's actually useful, and here we go, we're launching. Now we're going to toggle SAS, so it, oh, okay, we can't do that, shoot. Well, this is the point, now I should do the SAS on my own. Oh, I'm just gonna hope it stays straight. Anyways, so the main stage is just these four thrusters, like, even though it's not accurate because I left this one off, that's just so it's more fuel efficient, this is gonna take us out of the atmosphere, if we do this correctly, and then the middle one's just gonna be our Uh oh, wrong way. Okay. Oh, shoot, shoot. Okay, that's bad. Let's try that again. No, I didn't mean feel. Sorry, this game takes a while to load. Okay, let's try this again. Let's do it properly. annoying. Come on. Alright. See, the hard thing about this is that you can't toggle SAS because all it is is a probe core. And there's no, like, command modules or anything. So that's fairly annoying. Okay. Hey, we look pretty straight so far. So good. This was the, um, Let's read, let's read a little history at the end of this, so you know, so I can tell you about this better. Oops! Ah, come on. Okay. Alright, let's just read the history now so I can delay time before I have to launch again. Um, see if I can find it. I really should have done this before I started to, okay. So. Sputnik 1, the first satellite in orbit. The idea to launch the satellite into orbit kicked around among scientists for a long time, but Sputnik didn't really start around the mid-1950s. Soviet rocket engineer and spacecraft designer Sergei Korolev proposed an idea to the Minister of Defense Industries in 1954, saying that orbital satellites were inevitable given that rockets were a thing now. Korolev had an interesting career. He would originally he was originally an ICBM designer and ended up doing a lot of fun foundational work in rocketry. He designed a large number of rockets for the USSR, including Sputnik, a series of satellites. He actually never personally identified the lead designer because the USSR feared that the United States would assassinate him. He was referred to in official media as Glavini Karunstakor. I can't pronounce these names. The chief designer. Okay, now we'll launch. Just trying to delay some time. And here go our four engines. The first stage. Get pretty straight so far. This probably has more delta V than needed, but that's fine. That's because I can't toggle SAS and can't do anything. Technically, it's supposed to have a 10 degree inclination, but I'm just doing this the easy way, launch straight up out the atmosphere and then burn sideways to get into orbit. Burn prograde, as you say. But 
usually it can't tell where that is because I'm dumb. And this happens when I try things. You know, we're going to forget this and we're going to add bigger fins than what the thing had because I can't figure this out. So I'll cut ahead until the next launch. Okay, I have a good feeling about this one because I have SAS because I put a module, module in that wasn't in the original thing, but that perfect reenactment doesn't matter now. This through the atmosphere already. That's good. Then we'll try our Apple Apps with Swamp Point Pro, Pro Green by hitting this button here. And then it'll be up. Then we'll start burning our stage in the middle. Which will take us there. We're just gonna lower the throttle so we save as much fuel as possible. We're already at like supersonic speeds. I hope that goes well. We detach everything. Okay, just hope we don't blow up, because that happens with supersonic speeds. If you didn't know that already. Now we're going to wait till Apoapsis, and then we're going to burn Prograde. How high is our Apoapsis? Is that good? 100, okay, 156,000 meters. That's not bad. Now we're just gonna time warp a little bit till we get there. Then we're gonna point prograde and it will be all well and good. So, like right here would be our stopping point. Now we're gonna tell the rocket to point prograde. And now we're going to um, detach and start our next stage. give us a stability assist when we start our burn to keep us into orbit. Thank goodness for SAS. Best thing in the world. And there we go, our periapsis is going, I forget what happens. Anyways, we're getting into orbit, that's what I'm trying to say. Now we're just ready for CR per perfect periapsis mark. I'm going to burn faster now, so you can get this around. Now you have to point up a bit more, so that way. We keep our apoapsis up while extending out our periapsis so that way we don't re enter the atmosphere where we get out of the thing. And we look, we're looking solid. We're looking solid. And let's wait to see our periapsis mark. So just be coming around. We're almost there. And here we are, we're going to cut this, we're pretty circularized, we have a very good circularized orbit. 
So we're just going to detach this even though we have tons of fuel left. Now I'm going to use the fairings and our Sputnik satellite. Which is now just passing out. So we're just going to time warp just and it's Now we're going to talk a bit about the aftermath of Sputnik. Sorry, I didn't really mean that we were going to end it. Because we do have stuff to see. Okay. Let's flip to our important book page. And here we are. Aftermath. Sputnik 1 was launched on October 4th, 1957. It has reached its low orbit successfully and began transmitting exactly as designed. It didn't take long for the rest of the world to know Sputnik, as a simple beak being was detectable by amateur radio operators and the word spread quickly, causing a Sputnik crisis. Given at that, the USR demonstrated that it had the capability to put its objects into orbit. Might it not put weapons up there? Sputnik is create credited with being the space race appear with the beginning of the space race, a period of intense competition between the United States and the USSR in which both countries attempted to one-up each other in a race to establish superiority in space. Over the next several decades, the United States and the USSR would launch more and more complex missions into space, accumulating the Apollo missions, the launch of the MIR and Skylab space stations, and eventually the International Space Station. This, in shorter term, the USSR had launched two follow-up missions, Sputnik 1. Sputnik 2 carried the first living creature into orbit, Likia the dog. Likia was, a f was fitted with the medical sensors and, lo and launched a satellite very s similar to the initial Sputnik Pro. Likia unfortunately did not survive the mission. There was never any plan to deorbit the capsule when she died of overheating several hours of reaching orbit. Sputnik 3 was designed to carry a large number of sensors in order to gather more detailed information about environmental conditions in space. It was a partial success, many of the sensors work, but a tape drive inside the satellite failed, which resulted in the satellite failing, falling to map the valent Ellen radiation belts. Thank you for watching, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye and happy gaming.